Well, good morning. We have a little bit of news. We, a church here in our community vineyard, just up Hutton, bought us speakers and a little sound system to use, brand new, and and donated it to us. So that was very, very nice of them. Yeah, they, uh, they're the ones I told you about that said when they were in California, they used to do the um, baby shower for new churches. So they... Uh, they bought us speakers and all kinds of good stuff, so it was fun. We went and spent a little time with them yesterday, and very appreciative of that. That'll help us. And we have the microphone hooked up to it, so now when you talk, everyone will be able to hear you. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll get going this morning. Father, we love you, and thank you for today. Thank you that we can have a place where we can meet and where we can study your word together and grow closer to you. I pray that you would just be with our time today as we worship you, as we open your word. We ask it in your name. Amen. All right. All right. Everybody have a good week. You guys are very quiet today. It's not normal. <laughs> well, Tim's gone. Tim's gone. It's a quieter group. More at home. <laughs> That's funny. Well, last week we talked about how to make a difference in the world, in this world. Can anybody remember what one of the three things we talked about last week was? That was a long time ago, last week. <laughs> What's that? Right. We'll never make a difference by trying to manipulate people. Absolutely, that's one of them. There was another one that will never make a difference if we're something else. Prideful, that's right. And we'll only make a difference if we do what? Right, pointing people to Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, very good. So, how did you make a difference this week? Anybody want to share? I remember that. Yeah, absolutely. That is neat. I love it. Gabe, I'm going to have you come here so that everybody can hear and they can hear That's so cool. So he's supposed to be here next month. Next month. I think the 7th or the 9th. 7th or the 9th. Yeah, he comes with his, uh, he'll be coming through the university in Tecosa. Do you think he can go to the airport? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, let me think <laughs> about that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when we get a little bit more information. And I want to connect him to the, the team that were, especially that led him to the board. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of them are away at college right now, mm -hmm. but I think some of them are here. Good. Reconnect. That'd be great. That'd be great. Exciting. Yeah. Anybody else? I went to a reunion last week, um, weekend, to um, meet one cousin there for his birthday, and his brother lives there. But then I had two other cousins, one I had never met, and then the other one I hadn't seen since I was 
17, and she was in fifth grade, so 9 or 10. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that happened was, unfortunately, <laughs> ending my trip, she ended up in a wreck um, on her way back home, um, trying to pick up her phone that was in the seat and didn't realize that she was coming around a curve and she hit a tree. Mm. And so <clears throat> I had never met her husband before or her children. It's like I said, last time I seen her, she was fifth grade. And so um, anyway, long story short, we get to where she's at. Her husband was at work. And so he had to meet us there, myself and my other two cousins. And um, when we get there, of course, now the husband's upset. He's frustrated. You know, all this arguing and stuff going on. And the day before, she had said, my nickname is Coco. So all of my younger cousins, and she's younger, still remember me as Coco. So she had already said to me the day before, Coco, um, do you go to church? And, you know, what is your... Uh, relationship with you know God she was like I'm really like trying to um, find my my own way not the way that you know we all were raised and I'm like okay you know so we had a little bit of that conversation and I explained to her that I do go to church and I am a believer but I don't go to church because of the religious aspect, I go because of my personal just wanting and desire yeah. um, fellowship um, with the Lord and with other believers. So at any rate, um, she was like, okay, well, I would like to talk to you more about it. So now the next night is when she ends up in the wreck. Mm. So when we get there to where there, where she wrecked, her husband and, and her, of course, are now like kind of arguing <laughs> because he was frustrated she was trying not to be frustrated, things like that. So I told my one cousin, um, Grady, I said, Grady, get them now before it causes more issues and bring her, bring them to the car. So Grady has her husband drive so that we can, you know, get them home or whatever after everything. And then puts her in the middle between myself and him. And um, so she's crying and I just reached my arm around her and she didn't know I was doing this, but then I just started praying over her. <clears throat> so that's the background story. Well, yesterday she calls me because I had texted her to check on her. So she calls me and we have this conversation. And long story short, she said, Coco, I just felt your comfort and I felt um, your love of not judging and, you know, being judgmental or trying to figure out the situation. Like, you literally just, you and Josh have the voice of reason, and y'all just stay calm. And she said, and I can see God through that. So we go on, and we start talking, and she was like, now I'm ready to further my relationship with the Lord. Very good. So then I told her, you know, I'm grateful for that, because that's all I could do is just pray over you in the situation. So that was something that... I went to Atlanta for my own self-care and love, just for something that I needed. But she said to me, I know that you came for your own, but I know that God sent you to me. Good. So Very good. it was just um, a thing for me to see that when God is blessing you, he really is blessing somebody <laughs> else or others, and you don't always know it or get to see it. So that was the first thing. But the second thing is, your baby boy, Joe, has made such a, a good like impression on my grandbaby that Thursday I'm video calling them and Giselle says, Mimi, when are you going to come back and get me so I can go back to church and so I can see uh, my friend Joey and go play with him? And I said, you miss Joey? You remember playing with him? She said, yeah. So when are you coming back to get me? You know, she's four hours away. She doesn't realize that we're eight hours away, so I can't just go, you know, do that like that. And so I said, well, I will be sure to let um, Miss Noema and Pastor Andy know and Joe know that you miss him and that when you come back we will make sure that you get to see him so that was something that to me was good that 
I feel like God was showing me that even through children, yeah. he's, he moves. That's you great. Know? And so I just wanted you guys to know that. That's great. Very good. Anybody else? Okay. So this week, I had my last um, infusion, hopefully my last infusion. We'll find out if it's the last one or not. Um, but while I was there, there was a young lady who was the one who jabbed me and uh, all of that. And I began to talk to her, and her name was Morgan. So I was able to talk to her about my daughter, Morgan, and she asked what I did. And so we began to talk about church and God, and she was telling me about her boyfriend and how she was um, attending church. So I had a chance to kind of share my faith with her. So I, uh, I, she had a captive audience. I couldn't go anywhere, and neither could she. You know, there's, there's not too many seats in that room. And then once she was done and she walked away, I fell asleep. And while I was asleep, the ambulance came in for somebody else. And like, I guess paramedics came in and it was really loud and I slept through the whole thing. It was, it surprised her. And, but I got a great nap. So, <laughs> but yeah, we want to make a difference by pointing people to Jesus. So, you know, and, and when we think about that, people need to hear about what Christ can do for them. They need to hear and we're the only ones who can share because people are, you know, without Christ, their mind is different. They don't think in the same way as a believer does. Um, and as it seems like as the world keeps getting worse and worse, people's thinking seems to get worse and worse. So, I mean, a lot of people, their minds are very messed up today. Their, their thinking is so far off. I'm a... I had a customer of mine who he knows I'm a pastor and he knows I'm a Christian. I was going to meet him for lunch to talk about some stuff for his, uh, his business to help him out. And he, I asked him, so well, where do you want to eat? He goes, well, I have this place right next door to me called Twin Peaks. I had no idea what that was. And uh, my boss is standing there. He goes, well, no, he just starts shaking his head because uh, it was over the phone. Because I said, do you know what this place? He goes, yeah, no, no, you don't. don't. So, like, you know, there's somebody who's not even a, a who, I mean, just, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, who would say that to a pastor? You know, the thinking is just different. And, um, or people today who justify the killing of an unborn baby. Or people who are addicted in their mind that, to pornography. And there's all kinds of things, people's thinking today. And even good Christians can struggle in their mind. We can struggle with anger in our mind, depression, bitterness, impure thoughts, all these are things that can get a hold of our mind, and the mind is where it starts. If you look at the story of Lot and Abraham when they parted ways, Abraham told Lot, he says, you pick which direction you want to go, and I'll go the other way. And Lot looked down towards the area, towards Sodom, and he thought to himself, this looks like the land of Egypt. And so it all started with Lot. Lot's mess started because of the way he was thinking. His thinking was wrong. So, and it's no wonder people struggle so much today with, our, especially even us, with our thoughts, with everything that's put in front of us. You can hardly turn the TV on without something being in front of you that you shouldn't see, or billboards, or especially social media. It pops up everywhere. And just being around people in general, it can cause us to struggle in our mind. There are times I struggle listening to people when they, they're talking about things, and, and it's just we struggle. And then today, we, today, living in a world that is, their mind is so different. Their mind is so far off. They've got a mentality of, well, if it feels good, do it. That's been the mentality for years, but it's still there, and it seems to be getting stronger. I'll do what I want. And no, can, no one can tell me that what I'm doing is wrong. No one can tell me that I'm not right. And in this kind of world, can we have a pure mind? Can we have the mind of Christ? Can we have a, a pure mind in an impure world? That's why I was thinking about that this week with the passage that we're about to read. Can I, as a Christian, have a pure mind in an impure world? Is it even possible today with everything that's around us? Paul drills down on the contrast between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. And we talked about that last week. And he answers our question today, starting in verse number 6. Here it is, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Yet among the mature, so we know he's writing to mature believers. These are people who have been Christians for a while. Yet among the mature, 
we do impart wisdom, although it's not a wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God. That's the wisdom that comes from God. This was what Paul calls in other places the mystery of God. It was once hidden, but now it's revealed. So we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory, or God made this plan before any of us were around. None of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, and he's, uh, Paul's about to quote Isaiah chapter 64, he said, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. And that promises as much for us today as it was all the way back when Isaiah first prophesied it. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit of who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. When I read through this section, and I've read it multiple times this week, there's one phrase that just kept jumping out at me. What, what phrase jumped out at you in there? In the whole passage that we just read, all 10 verses. What's that? The mind of Christ, yeah, that kept that just gripped me this week. It didn't. And I, as I thought about the mind of Christ and I started looking back, I started to see that almost in every verse, with the exception of like verse 15 here at the end, we've got the Spirit of God, taught by the Spirit, the Spirit who is from God, the Spirit of God, the Spirit searches everything. There's a lot about the Holy Spirit in this section. And I was reading this week from Warren Wearsby, and he said this. You got it, Allie? You cannot be saved apart from the Father's grace, the Son's sacrifice, and the Spirit's conviction. It takes the whole trinity. It takes the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for us to even have salvation. So the Holy Spirit plays a huge role in this. And Paul teaches us a lot about the Holy Spirit in this section. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but here's what Paul teaches. He tells us this, that the Holy Spirit indwells us as believers. And he tells us that in verse number 12. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of it, who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. So we haven't received the spirit of the world, but we've received the spirit of God. So we've received him. He is inside of us. He's indwelling us. And then Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit searches everything. He searches out everything. And he tells us that in verses 10 and 11, which say, these things God has revealed to us through the spirit. So he's revealed through the spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Next verse. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit searches everything. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything. Then Paul tells us the Holy Spirit teaches us in verse uh, 13. So the Holy Spirit teaches. And here he tells us in verse 13. And we impart... This in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is teaching us. As a believer, when I read my Bible, the Holy Spirit is the one who is showing me things. He's teaching me as I read and as I study. And then Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit is the one who matures believers. He helps us. He matures us in our faith. And he talks about that for the last three verses. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for their folly to him. So the unsaved person, the natural person, doesn't understand spiritual things. They're foolish to him. He just doesn't understand them. So when a person says, oh, well, that's just in the Bible. Well, that's just Christianity. Well, that kind of tells me where their mind is. And the Bible tells us 
an unsaved person cannot understand the things of God. He's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Next verse. The spiritual person judges all things. So he's looking at, he's discerning is the word that's used there. He's discerning all things. But he himself is judged by no one. The next verse. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So he is helping to mature us and give us the mind of Christ. This, and that's the part that I want to zero in on today is that mind of Christ. That, yeah, in an impure world, we can still have a pure mind. I read this this week. I'll put it up there. To have the mind of Christ means to look at life from the Savior's point of view, having his values and desires in mind. It means to think God's thoughts and not to think as the world thinks. That's what the mind of Christ is. It's to see things and to think about things the way that Christ thinks about them, not like the rest of the world to see things as God sees them. The Corinthian church was so focused on the gifts of the Spirit that they forgot about the basic ministry of the Spirit. They forgot about the basics of things. And that's why they got so much in trouble. They got to chasing the show and forgot about the one who is the one who brings the show. They're focused on the gifts and not the giver. They weren't thinking like Christ. They didn't have the mind of Christ. So to answer our question for today, can I have a pure mind in an impure world? The answer is yes, but only if I have the mind of Christ. So that leads us to the question, okay, I can have the mind, a, a pure mind in an impure world, so how do I do that today? Well, the Holy Spirit has to have complete control of my life for me to have the mind of Christ. I have to be totally surrendered to him in every area of my life. That's why Paul talked about the Holy Spirit so much before he came to, you can have the mind of Christ, but let me tell you how. By doing all of these things, the Holy Spirit's going to teach you. He's going to indwell you. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. So that sounds, all those things sounds great, but how do I do it? How do I put that into practice today? How do I, in a world where I'm bombarded with temptation and impurity everywhere, how do I keep a pure mind? Well, Today we're going to do something very different, and we're going to write the message together. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Here's what we're going to do. We're all going to answer the question, how do I allow the Holy Spirit to have complete control of my life? Gabe, come here and grab the microphone. We're all going to teach together today. All right, you ready? How can I give the Holy Spirit complete control of my life? How do I do it? Practice. Okay, practice. And failure. And failure. Practice. But what does it look like? Like, practically, how do I do that? How do I give him control? I mean, is it just as simple as... Um, here, take the keys to my car. You can drive. You know, I, you, you drive so that I don't get mad when I get cut off. Although that would be totally cool if he did drive. That would look very strange if we're driving down the, the road and nobody's in the driver's seat. <laughs> I, I would move over to the passenger seat. Okay. <laughs> but I think, like, people are naturally wired for giving up control. Absolutely. Um, it's probably in the top ten list of three most difficult things to do in your life. Yep. And that's where the practice comes in because you're going to fail. You know, you're, you're right. You're going to get angry. You're mm -hmm. going to get, um, you're, you're going to fall to temptation. Mm-hmm. And, but it's not a one-off. I failed, so I'm done. Right. You know, you, you get bucked off a horse, you get back on that animal, and here we go again. Right. Yeah, the Psalms say that the just man falls seven times, but he rises up again. Mm -hmm. So we're going to fall. We're yeah. going to mess up, but we have to keep getting up. So very good. Very good. Who else? How can I give complete control to my, of my life to the Holy Spirit? Just you. Well, I think uh, you have to stay in the Word, you know, yep. because I know if a day goes by and I don't get in the Word, I don't know what the Lord's telling me or the Holy Spirit maybe needs to direct me. 
So practically just living in the world daily. Daily. Very, that, yeah, that's a big one. I was at a, um, a church planters meeting this week. Um, with about 20 guys who are planting churches in the greater Kansas City area. Some of them have been doing it for a little while. Some of them are brand new. And I walked in, and uh, Matt Miller, who is uh, New City Church, which is our sending church, was kind of the one leading this thing. And I walked in, and guess who the speaker was? Is Dan Sutherland, who is my Thursday at 4.30 appointment every single week. Um, and Dan's sitting in there, and Dan's planted... Uh, 35 or 40 churches in the last seven years here in Kansas City. He's a church planning, um, he's on staff at a church doing church planning, helping churches plant. So Dan gets up and he, one of the things that he said is, and I'd never heard it put this way before. I always heard, you know, my dad preached for years and every, you know, start the day off with the Lord, you know, get up, read your Bible first. And so he gets up and he says, you know, I've heard this all my life, but, um, I'm thinking that, and he says, I end the day with the Lord. And I thought, wait a minute, what? He said, Matt's got a Jeep, and it's a it's a, um, a hybrid. He said, if that battery's dead, he said, you got Teslas all over the place. He goes, what do you do when you go home at night with your Tesla? And one of the guys said, well, you plug it in. He said, if you don't plug it in at night, are you going to be able to drive it tomorrow morning? No, he goes, so I do it at night, so I'm ready for the morning. <laughs> and I thought, hey, that works for me. Uh, you know, whatever works for you. you, if, you if at night is better for you, and, and he has it scheduled. He talked a lot about priorities and schedule, and he said 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., no one has access to him. That's his hour with the Lord every day. And I thought that is awesome to have the specific time, and everybody knows you can't get a hold of Dan. You can't call him. You can't text him. He's not going to respond between 9 and 10 p.m. every night. That's his time with the Lord. So that's a huge one for me to be surrendered. I've got to stay close to him. Mr. Cole? Prayer. That's the other one. Mm -hmm. over stuff that I normally would like just blow off and not you know pay that much attention to like when my focus is not where it needs to be if I don't wake up and immediately go into prayer yep and Paul says to pray without ceasing in the old King James that doesn't mean we walk around praying all day it means to be in an attitude of prayer where throughout the day we keep going to the Lord and bringing him into every area of our life. That was another big one that I wrote down too, was, yeah. It's kind of funny to me, I guess I can say too, that I think about, when I think about, um, we have two friends in my life that um, do this, and it sometimes I just think, wow, it, it just blesses me so much, but just the small things, like I'll be talking about something, and I'm like, you know, this needs to happen, and they'll just grab my hand and start praying for it. Like, and, and you're going, oh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, oh, yeah, we can like, do that, can't we? <laughs> but, but, you know, the thing is, is you do forget that you can just do that, you know? I mean, and I, that so prayer to me is, like, huge to, to, to be in constant, you know, fellowship with God because, I, you know, I don't just think of, but I, I had that happen the other day at work. I was with someone that's a Christian as well, and I was, I was mm -hmm. worried about my daughter and her labor stuff, and she just sat down in there. She goes, give me your hand. I'm like, what? And she just starts praying for me, and I'm like, that's, you know, that's just awesome. And, and I need to remember to do that for people, you know, because you, you, you don't think about it. So that is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes we forget. But, yeah, we have access at all times. That's awesome. Anybody else? Tony? Gabe? Paul would explain what Lisa just said. And I, the last week, I was going to bring it up. It's a kind of brutal. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes when two or three get together, Stronger, the force makes stronger. And if we try to run this Christian life through this world, it's rough. Every day it's rough. But if you got someone, if you don't use your count to be there, mm -hmm. you're done. You keep going. 
Spirit to live by faith. The only way you have the Holy Spirit is to say that by the Christ. Yep, I wrote that. I wrote down accountability. That's one I hadn't thought about. That's a great one. Very good. Anybody else? Ruby just wanted the microphone. <laughs> well, in uh, Philippians and quite a few different other places, it shows like what you're supposed to be meditating on day and mm-hmm. night, um, like whatever is true, whatever is just, and like praying right when you get up in the morning. I think it's extremely difficult to wake up every morning and have your first thought be about God. Because, I mean, Mine's well, usually I have to go to the restroom. Exactly. See, <laughs> that's my first thought. And we're, and we're spo- our first thought of the day is supposed to be about God. <laughs> well, I guess you can do that while you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with you. That's not the first thing that comes to my mind. Exactly. And it's extremely difficult mm-hmm. for that to be the first thing on your mind. Uh huh. Forcing yourself to do things for like quite a while until you drop it into your brain. Yeah, they, they say to build a habit, it takes 30 days of every day, but after that, it becomes a habit. Yeah, when Jeff, the fact that James used to sing that song, uh, I'm like, can you get the full rap, praise you, Lord, I praise you, Lord? And so I practiced that after I had my cancer and seen it. The first thing I said to him, I'm going to die fat and look in him, and so it's in there. And that keeps the focus back on God and not yourself. So that seems like he's the flow for us all the time. I love it. Nobody's practiced. Gotta practice. You know, I've been cancer free over thirty years, so that's a lot of practicing. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> thirty years. That's a. I'd say it's a habit by now. <laughs> that's great. Any others? I wrote down like for the first one was well, you have to be saved. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like you know, we kind of have to have. A, if he's going to be in us, we got to. If we're going to give him control, he's got to be in us. So. That's a, a good starting point, but I think you guys are operating from the attitude of we're all Christians anyway, so that's good. That's good. All these have been great. Um, I also wrote down and maybe said something uh, about how the Bible tells us to take our thoughts captive. Like, it is, you have to be intentional. You have to choose. I feel like we all want it to be easy where we just pray and we're like, God, help me, and he just makes us automatically do what we're supposed to do or say what we're supposed to say and all that. But it takes effort on our part. Like we have to we have to consciously do and cap, captivate or captivate take captive those thoughts and everything. Um, and so anyway, I don't know what else I was gonna say. But that's a big thing. Intentional. Taking a, yeah. taking that. Oh, because um, some of you might have seen my post the other day but that but every temptation is a temptation to forget God. And that's pretty, That's what it is. Like, every temptation is, don't think about what he said, just do this, you know, and forget God. So we have to be intentional. Yep. Any others? Jody? I wanted Gabe to get his steps in today. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing that's coming to my mind are the fruits of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. When we're living with the whole, in the Holy Spirit, we know that we have what we just studied, mm-hmm. the fruits of the Spirit in our life. Yeah. I think that's the evidence of, you know, what isn't uh, the fruit of the Spirit. I think we have to be mm-hmm. reminded of those, but just always having it in our mind and putting that forward shows that we're, the Holy Spirit has control of us. Absolutely. Yeah, I wrote down kind of the opposite side of that, and that is to not be living with unconfessed sin in our life. You know, if I'm living with unconfessed sin in my life, the Holy Spirit's not going to have control because I've, I've handcuffed him. So, yeah, that goes right. You came at the same thing from the opposite side. That's very good. Who else? 
You didn't know you were going to have to like write the message today, did you? <laughs> a long time ago, I was reading a, a devotional, and I don't remember who the author was, but he said uh -huh. when he prays in the morning, he never says amen. Because hmm. it's like, okay, this conversation is ended. He feels like that way he leaves it open so he can talk to God throughout the day. You know, he that's neat. Says amen until the end of the day. So that's kind of a that's a neat idea. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that until you mentioned that. So. That means i got to remember to say amen. I usually fall asleep praying, so <laughs> my amen's going to be in my dream or something. <laughs> I thought that was kind of that's a neat, yeah, that's a neat idea, yeah. I think Lisa had something, too. Bitterness, yeah. Towards the spouse. You, do we need to dig into that a little bit, Gary? A little bit? <laughs> and next Sunday we're going to be talking about. <laughs> yes. I have one more. Um, kind of going along with all of what they were just saying is, I think if we spent some of that time, like being seven and spent at the end of the night, and just doing a self-examination and asking the Lord, like, how did I fail you today, or you know, what can I do better, and just keep it, or like. Do I have unconfessed sin like today? And just making that be the only part of the day so you start fresh and just keeping in mind that self examination and all that. Good. Very good. One Amen. thing that popped into my mind when she was talking about you have to be intentional mm -hmm. the temptations in your life, I can guarantee you, they're intentional. Yeah. They're thrown at you intentionally. Mm -hmm. It takes intention, being intentional on your part to combat that yeah. and succeed. That's good. That's very good. Anybody else? I mean, God's kind of like a long distance relationship. How do you keep that alive? You you have to constantly be talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to stand there awkwardly. Yeah, constantly been talking to them, constantly be thinking what you can, like, do for them. Um, and because that's what, I mean, that's what all this is. It's supposed to be a relationship. It's not supposed mm -hmm. to be religion or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's very good. That's a good way to look at it, like the long-distance relationship. I like that analogy. Even though it's close, but not really. Because we never see him. It's not like a physical person sitting here, so. That's very good, Ruby. Very good. Any last ones? I just want to comment on, uh, I read this in the church. Yeah. Read it a week before. When I pray to God, I talk to the Lord. He's already heard it. Mm -hmm. But now he's listening to me repeat it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> A man of few words. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Yeah, these are all great ways. I think the, the big thing is we just have to be consciously aware at all times because we're never alone. He's with us all the time. And if we're going to be completely yielded to him, it's about letting go of the control and bringing him into every situation. I think you guys nailed it. I think that was very good. I might have you guys preach every message now. You did way better than me. That's great. As humans, though, can he really have 100% control of our lives? It's a All great question. I don't think so. We're, we're tempted, mm -hmm. and we can. And we have thoughts, so really, I'm not perfect. I would no. say he can get cool. He I'll, has the beard. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> in a coma. Do you well, dream? you might be dreaming. <laughs> I. I uh, yeah, I've had some dreams where I did some things, and I had one where I beat somebody up. And I'm not telling. I'm not telling. Uh, no, they're not here. No, but actually, uh, yeah, yeah, it's Tim. <laughs> actually, I was riding with Bill on Friday, and uh, Bill was telling me. He said, "He goes, 
you must have passed one of your dreams to me because I dreamed I was smacking this person around and it was the same person. So don't go ask Bill who it was. Poor Tim. <laughs> Poor Tim. <Yeah. laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Bill telling me he had one of my dreams about smacking this person around. So I'm just... <laughs> think that we have it all and we, you know, can't get any better or elevate any higher, then do we at that point become a little bit self-righteous, you know? That's kind of what, like, I had to pray about and ask God, you know, at what point do, is there a balance between that, you know? And so I get what you're saying because I was always asking the same thing. It's our and dependency. He's keeping us dependent on yeah, him. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, we're always going to have a need for him. Yep. One day we will, but it'll be uh, after we're dead, after we're gone. We don't have to deal with temptation and sin anymore. We'll, we'll be able to live the perfect life. I can't wait for that day. No more sin, no more sickness, no more suffering, no more pain, no more iron infusions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, none of those things. One day. Could be today. Could be today. I'm ready. I hope you are too. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for our discussion this morning, how um, all of us have different um, insight into how we can be completely yielded to you and completely focused on you and surrendered to you so that we can live a a pure life. We can't have a pure mind in an impure world because our world is so impure. So help us, Father, to be completely dependent on the Spirit at all times throughout the day to be consciously aware and intentional about it. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Very good. Oh, um, before we leave, Noemi has the t-shirt thing. So if you would like one of the t-shirts, you can see her. We're going to get some made. We found the company is here in Baser. Uh, so we're using local we're going we're gonna to focus on this community. So it's right up around the corner on Parallel, I think, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's the company the is. So if you want them, she can get them ordered for you, and we'll, uh, we'll get them in soon. So I'm excited about that. I'm getting some polo shirts, too. So there's a thing. You can do pol polo shirts, crew neck, or V-neck T-shirts. So if you want them, you can see Noemi. But very good, guys.